Okay, let's unpack this qualifying for the Mexican Grand Prix. Very weird qualifying. Uh, it just seemed to me like because of the low downforce, like the high speed, the cars were kind of all over the place when it came to who was where. Uh, but Carlos Sainz with that qualifying run, he had two runs, one sub 16 second, one minute 16 second, and one very close to that, but such consistency. In fact, he was taking some lines that were very odd. Uh, through the inside section, he was going in places that you don't normally go. Uh, you can actually see that there wasn't a lot of rubber down in the places he was going around the track. And he got the, he was finding the time. He was doing something new and he got the, he got that, he got there. Cause I don't, overall pace, I don't think Carlos Sainz is any better or worse driver than Leclerc, but he just seems like he has a bit more of the smooth operator kind of stuff going on where he's able to go out and find those extra little parts of the track. Reminds me of Verstappen taking a karting line in Brazil years ago uh, and passing everybody and then people realizing that he was doing it and started copying him. So uh, some of those lines might actually be seen, but let's go through the whole thing. I wasn't waiting for the graphic to come up, so we actually go through with this one. We'll start out with, uh, with Q1 and who was eliminated first off Zhao he's been 20th forever now uh Ocon finished way outside of what his teammate did uh I don't know if it's him or if they're prioritizing I think this is the right word Gasly's car more with upgrades hard to say then we have the two chuckleheads of Perez and Piastri hilarious uh because the the part that I want to happen this year is where Ferrari catch both Red Bull and McLaren in the Constructors' Championship, and then Leclerc catches both Verstappen and Norris in the in the Drivers' Championship. I think that narrative would be great for Formula One and a good watch through the end of the year. And with Perez and Piastri down there, both Verstappen and Norris don't have a rear gunner. So during pit stops tomorrow, be watching out because Ferrari is going to be able, as long as they don't trip over themselves, they're going to be able to play the mind game. I don't know who they're going to play mind game for, though. Technically, Leclerc is the Ferrari boy. He's the guy who's been at Ferrari the longest. He's there next year. He has these long contracts. But science just seems faster to me. Okay. But what is that? What happened with Piastri? His first run was uh, off track. He had an off track, mm, right? I think it was. He he rode one of those curbs. I don't know if it was the inside track. It was either turn 11 or is at the very end where, where you go into the stadium section just before that. It was one of those and he rode up on the curve and he went over and he got his lap time to leave. And the second one did right after that, that actually fueled him for two runs, which is very rare. And he was able to go out, but he had worn tires. They were ones that he had done on his previous run. So he couldn't put in a very good time. Perez, he just seemed slow. Uh, very same in FP3. He was just kind of slow. This one, he was kind of slow and he made a bunch of mistakes. Now, also Colapinto, P16, pretty good. Uh, not, he's new here. This is a very different track. I don't imagine he's ever driven here before. So it's kind of an outlier of a track. You see people who have been here before and been driving for a long time, doing very well. Botas in 15th is a good example. And uh, Alonso in 13th, kind of the guys who are able to put in those lap times and have been here a lot are gonna do well here. We'll we'll give that kind of newness of Colapinto to that. Although he did put in a pretty good lap time, I will say. But the biggest thing from Priesti and Perez is now seventh and uh, seventh and eighth are up for grabs because they'll be able to fight their way through, but not up to those positions. So look for opportunities for maybe both a Haas or a Gasly or maybe Sonona and Lawson. Uh, being able to work their way through and so those extra points that aren't normally on offer normally there's only about three points on offer because the top four teams have eighth and up locked out so you only got ninth and tenth to fight for but now seventh and eighth are opened up so there's some points for people to actually move their way through the constructors championship so that's pretty interesting who else do we have so q2 botas again very good for him to be actually make it out of q1 not very often with that uh, dumpster truck of a car that he's driving. Stroll, Alonso, Lawson, Sonona. So Sonona crashed in the stadium section. Here is Sonona's crash. 
We'll take a look at it. This is a long clip. I don't want to watch it all. Uh, he comes in through here and he just, he's on that little bit there. So if you see him when he's coming up, he gets his tire on that little section over there. And that means he's washed wide and he doesn't back out of it. If he had backed out of it, he wouldn't have crashed. But he just kept it, kept his foot in it, trying to use the downforce to turn the car and he just completely lost it. Now, what ended up happening with that is Stroll, both the Haases were ahead of Sonona. So they were able to finish their laps and secure themselves into Q3, even though Hulkenberg and Magnussen both in Q2 didn't look overly fast for their final lap there. Uh, and Stroll, Alonso, Lawson were all right behind Sonona and a red flag came out with the yellows at the end there. So they weren't able to put in representative laps. And so Sonona not only screwed himself, but his teammate, because I believe that Lawson might have been able to make it in through to Q3, uh, because Alonso and Stroll, the, they were there, but the car didn't really seem like it was able to put any more out. So, so Sonona really kind of being nasty in that. Uh, I will mention that the times from Gasly, Sonona, and Albon through most of qualifying were actually really, really, really good. Very strong results through the whole thing. So now we move into the top 10. Uh, Hulkenberg, Albon, Gasly, Magnussen, Hamilton, Russell, Leclerc, Norris, Max, and Carlos. Uh, the times, I will also mention, were very close. Especially in Q2. From P3 all the way up. No, uh, from... Oh, there was three tenths separating third to twelfth. Three tenths and a little bit. From third to twelfth. That's how close all of that was. So you see everybody improving and stuff like that. Keep in mind, it wasn't that long in the past, maybe about 10, 12 years ago, where we had such a thing as called a 107% rule. If you don't know what that is, there were actually more cars on track than now, and some of them were kind of, we'll call them B-class teams. They weren't very good. There's Catrum and HRT and uh, oh, Virgin and a bunch of other teams like that. They all ended up folding some way or the other eventually. But they were so slow that they had to implement a 107% rule. So if you went a minute, they had to be faster than a minute and seven. And around here, that would be like if they were putting in lap times in the 20s, the mid 20s. Uh, and that often kind of actually did happen. I don't ever remember them being kicked out for being in the 107% rule. Because if you weren't in 107, they could actually deny them from racing. It didn't happen very often, but that was a thing that was happening. So to have the entire uh, Q2 down to three tenths is pretty amazing. So let's go through this. Hulkenberg had an awful slide in the last uh, sector. It seemed like the last sector was everybody's uh, difficult part of the track. Uh, we would have probably three out of 10 cars would ruin their lap in the last sector. Uh, Ferraris were particularly bad, although in the last uh, qualifying, it seemed like that part of the track rubbered up a little bit more. And except for the Mercedes, everybody seemed to be okay there. So let's let's go through this. So we'll start off with, uh, we obviously mentioned Ferrari that did very well. First and fourth, uh, I think that's a pretty good result for them. Uh, the lap times that were being put in at the very end there were crazy. I didn't think we'd really see much below a 16.5. That seemed like the wall for a lot of people. And then 17 was kind of like Formula B. But these guys really did push out their laps. And I knew it was going to be coming once I saw Albon put in a sub-17 lap. Uh, because he should technically be about 8 tenths behind everybody. So you knew they were going to get down there as soon as that happened. Check out P18. Whatever. He's done for this is supposed to be his inspiring place to drive but no uh, max p2 his first lap was deleted now i do have that here somewhere okay so max's first run was deleted and this is it this is one two three they're all technically almost right hand corners they obviously try to straighten those out as much as possible this is the weirdest track limits i've ever seen but i will say they were expecting it uh, because you can't really tell from this, but if you look really closely at this picture, you see the white line here? See this white line? And there's just a tinge of like grayish blue on the inside of there. That is the new track limits that they've uh, imposed on all the tracks coming up. So any place that they think there's going to be a track limits issue, 
or where they've changed, they put that blue line in there. And it's actually detection for a camera so that uh, some computer mojo can work out if the cars are actually over. It'll, it'll ping the FIA to be able to go and look at it uh, if the car goes over the track. And it, it uses some sort of AI to be able to do that. And you can see they installed that blue line there and it's on one, two, and corners three. They're kind of in succession here. Uh, and the blue stuff is there on every single one of those corners. So they knew this was going to be a contention point. And Leclerc also had his time deleted and a couple other people, although it wasn't advertised as much, uh, but Leclerc also had a pretty important lap deleted. This was Max's lap, although he didn't end up putting in a faster second lap, but that really is having a banker lap in gives you that confidence that you have one in there. So now you can really, really push. Whereas Max's second one was trying to just get in somewhere in the top six. I don't know that Max really has uh, holding off in his blood, but um, that was a thing. And I think it's going to be a thing for tomorrow as well. I think we're going to see some track limits uh, there. We have, that has come up where we've seen five second penalties. They've been there, thereabouts on most tracks where, uh, where they haven't cured uh, track limits. Perez, I want to tell you, he's exited a Q1 more than Lance Stroll. I don't think you really need to say much else. Terrible. Just so if he fights through the field, he'll be really lucky for P8. Really, really lucky for P8. Uh, it is hard to pass here. I suspect he won't be in the points. And if he is, maybe one or two. Maybe. Lando, good run from him. Uh, his first run in Q3 was not so great. Uh, it was kind of scruffy. And then his second one was much, much better. I was obviously enough to get P3. Uh, I don't favor Lando in pole position anymore. Really, he's only kind of converted one pole position and he's lost that pole on every start ever. He's not a good starter. We'll admit that now. Lots of people have their faults. I think that's probably his biggest one. I'd rather see him start in, in P3 to be perfectly honest. So it'll be a fight tomorrow, that's for sure. Um, that is going to be a spicy turn one. It is quite a ways down to turn one and with the low downforce and everybody vying for that inside line. Uh, I suspect we'll see people go wide there. Uh, it is going to be, I just hope there's no controversy. Uh, P7 for Kevin Magnuson. He is my uh, qualifying of the day man. He extracted as much as he could from that car. He beat out his teammate. He beat out pe people that have technically this weekend been faster in Albon and in Sonona, who were both lightning fast in every practice session and in qualifying. Uh, and I just think that's a great result from him. Gasly is another person who has qualified their teammate by so much. P8, that's an amazing result for Alpine, when at the first of the year, kind of looked like they were vying for Sauber's position in the worst uh, car on the grid. So that's an amazing, amazing result. And then uh, Friday practice. So I guess we can go over this. Uh, Friday practice, I mean, it was, or not Friday practice, uh, FP3, not too much. So the engine that Max changed to was an older engine. So that's kind of a follow up from the last video that I did. So they ended up going with an older power unit. They didn't take the penalty. I suspect they'll take it in Brazil. I don't think a new power unit was gonna make it to the end without having some reliability issues. So I suspect that in Brazil, they will take that penalty and go with a new engine, which is not ideal to have to change out this engine in here. So now they have a really, really old engine as their backup. So that could affect some of their practice programs. That is to say, if they don't fix the other engines they had, but now they have two engines that are out that are questionable. The one from Montreal and the one that they changed out yesterday. So, I don't know. It was something to do with an inlet on the manifold on the turbo. So, uh, the Formula One pundits and myself hit the nail on the head there. It just felt like a power issue, but not an electrical issue. So, the MGUH was okay. It was an inlet on the manifold. So, hmm, interesting. Probably a cooling issue. All that kind of stuff is all heat related. So should have added a few more louvers in there. Uh, this was uh, FB3. It was pretty tight. Hard to say who really did good here or not. It was only the McLarens that had the actual pace there. With Carlos just behind them. Uh, I don't 
think it was really representative of a lot of the stuff that was going on. It was a weird session. I made a big note that RB, Williams, McLaren, Haas, and Perez didn't come out of the pits for about 15 minutes, and then Perez stayed in there for another five. He just didn't come out. I don't know why. There was nobody talked about it, but he sat in P20 for forever. And then he came out and did tons and tons and tons of laps, lap after lap after lap. So maybe long runs, but he only put in 19 laps, but he was 20 minutes later than everybody else. So uh, when he did come out, he put some laps in. I suspect he was doing long runs to, for his race pace, uh, but obviously he should have practiced a little bit more from qualifying. Aside from that, uh, McLaren went to, oh, McLaren. Uh, so last year, for, so with the 16.5, that makes McLaren 1.2 seconds faster than they were last year. So the improvement year over year from just McLaren is crazy. Uh, so to see everybody really improving, and I think the only one who has gotten slower from last year uh, is Fernando and his crew. So overall, pretty cool. The last and only thing left on the docket is the petition from McLaren was denied, dismissed, whatever. It was kind of stupid. They, as I mentioned before, if they were gonna fight this, they needed to bring new information. They needed to bring a new angle that the FI hasn't looked at. So they argued the significant and relevant new element was the decision itself was wrong. So the FI is a, so what have you brought new to us? Well, um, you, you're just wrong. So <laughs> it's just, they didn't bring any news, so obviously they didn't win it. It's kind of stupid. I don't really understand um, why they would do that if they didn't have any information. Um, uh, again, the narrative is correct. I think there has been a driver's meeting as well. Apparently Lando and Max got at, at it when it came to driving standards. I think that the narrative is in the correct direction where some of these calls are just kind of stupid. And I'm not just talking about Max and I'm not just talking about the fight from uh, last weekend. I'm talking about in general, we've seen weird calls. If you just break down from the past three years or even in this generation of car, we've seen so many calls that were way off from what they should be. And, and again, I will mention that I think we are ready for full-time stewards uh, to be held accountable. Uh, so if you can't, so right now the, it's just like, it's down to subjectiveness. If you have two different stewards out there or say no, and then the next time there's another two out and they say yes, and they view it differently. Whereas we had standard stewards every single time. It's not necessarily that they will always make the same decision and the correct decision. It's that they can be held accountable. You can walk up to the, say to them, your job is on the line because you made a bad decision and you're fired. Just like they did with what's his nuts in 2021 when he did that nonsense at the very end of the year, uh, robbing Lewis Hamilton of his eighth win. For the sake of the show, I think that they should be able to hold these stewards accountable as well. Aside from that, I'm excited for tomorrow. This is going to be, I believe, a good race. We hope. We really hope that the DRS isn't too strong here. It shouldn't with the low air, but you never know. It could end up spoiling the race. I hope we don't just get into that. Everybody's 1.3 seconds behind each other because of tire wear, although the tire wear is going to be apocalyptic. The biggest thing I think is you're going to see the McLaren Orlando Norris do very well at the end of the race. It, the McLaren has been, for pretty much the whole year, very kind on its tires. As well, the Alpines have been very kind under their tires. So look for those guys. If we don't see any nonsense into turn one, I think McLaren might come out on top here. Although, I, I'm really surprised at how fast the Ferrari is. I thought the low downforce and the slow sections was going to kill them because medium to medium slow speed corners have been their Achilles heel this year. Uh, but they've just been lightning fast on the straights and it not even matter because they're so quick. So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Subscribe if you're new. Throw me a like if you got a second. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for the race.